All right, let's try a 2D motion momentum conservation problem. So with two dimensions, all we're gonna need is an X and a Y. So thinking about momentum as a vector, it's gonna have an I hat and a J hat component. Rather than doing it all as one big I hat, J hat combined equation for momentum before equals momentum afterwards, I tend to break it up into an X and a Y, into that I hat and J hat. So identifying our information. So Oops, got to get on the right page. A 160 gram hockey puck traveling at 25 meters per second collides with a 20 kilogram curling stone at rest. After the collision, the stone is traveling at 0.2 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the puck's original path. Find the velocity of the puck after the collision. Okay, so the puck's coming in at 25 meters per second. I did have to change grams to kilograms. It's only moving in the x direction and it's moving in my positive x direction, zero in the y. After the collision, the curling stone that was originally at rest now is moving at 0.2 meters per second at 30 degrees from the original path. So it's gonna, I'm gonna choose it to be this way just because that's the picture they were given we were given. Um, so I'm gonna get 0.2 cosine 30, 0.2 sine 30. This one's positive because it's in my up direction. Also looking at my picture, they show that the puck goes off in this general direction. So I'm just going to identify this as V, this is theta. And so now I can say that the X direction is V cosine theta and the Y direction is negative V sine theta, the negative because it's pointing in my negative Y direction. So now that I've identified those variables, now I'm going to go ahead and plug all that in to my two momentum conservation equations, my one in the X and my one in the Y. I can do this because there is no net external forces on the system, we're gonna assume the ice is frictionless. So originally the um, curling stone is not moving in the X direction or the Y direction, and originally the puck is not moving in the Y direction. All right, so now I have the mass of the puck times V1X equals the mass of the puck times V cosine theta plus the mass of the curling stone times 0.2 cosine 30. So the problem here is, I know the mass of the puck, I know the initial velocity of the puck, I do not know V or theta. So I have two unknowns, so lucky for me, I have a second equation, so I have two equations. So here I have zero is equal to M1 times V negative V sine theta plus M2 times 0.2 sine 30. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and solve for V in this equation, and then substitute it in here, and then either use solver or see what happens, I guess. So we're gonna move this over to the other side. 0.2 times sine 30 equals 0.1, good. And so now I have, well actually we'll move this one over so we can get rid of the negative sign. So I have M1 sine theta times V equals M2 times 0.1 divide it over, so now I have V is equal to M2 times 0.1 divided by M1 sine theta. And go ahead, substitute that in over here for V. So now I have M1 V1 X equals M1 times M2 times 0.1 times the cosine of theta, all divided by M1 sine theta plus M2 times 0.2 cosine theta. 30. Okay, so that looks ugly. <laughs> nice thing for me though, I got sine, cosine here. Um, it's cosine over sine, so it's cotangent or just divide the tangent out. So let's get rid of that M1 there, make that a little easier on us. Um, let's divide everything by M2. Okay, and then let's solve. So now I have M1 V1 X divided by M2 minus 0.2 cosine 30 equals 0.1 divided by the tangent of theta. Yeah, okay. So then I'm just gonna dump all this stuff in the denominator there so, and take the inverse tangent. So theta is gonna be the inverse tangent. Again, could I have used solver on this? Probably. Um, this is just going a little faster, I feel like. So 0.1 divided by, so then we have our 0.16 times 25 divided by two, 
minus 0.2 cosine 30. And that gives me a theta value of 75 degrees. That's cool. 75 degrees. Now that I know theta, I can plug my 75 degrees in here and get my V. The V comes out to be 12.94 meters per second. So then I just need to put that all in one big group. So 12.94 meters per second at, and then I'll say 75 degrees from the original path. And of course, opposite the direction of the curling stone. All right, so there is our example of a 2D problem. Again, remember, you're gonna need to resolve into components X and Y, and then do an X and a Y conservation momentum problem. System of equations typically is expected.